Hello everybody. Today we have a quick lesson on part of section 7-7 where they give you the graph of various polynomial functions and they want you to go through and do the following four steps. Identify the zeros of each function, so we're going to go through and find all of their x-intercepts. Give the coordinates of the y-intercept of each graph. We'll find those. Uh, number three, identify the lowest possible degree of each polynomial function. And I'll tell you how we do that. And then finally, write the factored form for each polynomial function. Now that's going to take a little bit of work, and then we're going to check that on our graphing calculator. Uh, I hope to do problems A and B today, and I'd like you to work on C and D, and then bring them into class tomorrow where we'll go over them at the very beginning of the period. Uh, after we go over C and D, uh, we will be working out of the green packet for section 7-7, so make sure that you have that tomorrow. Uh, in case you're wondering where this comes from, uh, this comes from page 426 in your textbook if you'd like to follow along with the book. So let's go ahead and do step one, identify the zeros of each function. To identify the zeros, we want to locate where the function crosses the x-axis. So for the first one, it's at negative 5, 3, and 7 for part A. For part B, the zeros are negative 6, negative 3, 2, and 6. So we've identified the zeros for each function in problems A and B. Two, give the coordinates of the y-intercept for each. Uh, looks like for the first one, part A, the y-intercept is 0, 105. That's listed right there. And for the second one, the y-intercept is 0, 108. It's important to note that the x-coordinate is 0 when you're looking at the y-intercept. Third, we want to identify the lowest possible degree of each polynomial function. To do this, you want to count the number of times that the graph cuts through the x-axis, and you also want to consider whether those slices will be single, double, or triple roots. Now, I'll tell you this. For all of these graphs in parts A and B, C and D, for all of them, these are all single roots. So all we have to do, remember, this is from class today, a single root slices through the graph and does not change or it never flattens out as it cuts through the x-axis. As it cuts through the x-axis, it doesn't flatten out. A double root bounces off the x-axis, sort of like a parabola. That's going to be a double root. And a triple root will flatten out when it gets to the x-axis and then increases like that. Or it could go the other way, decreasing uh, from one side and continuing. So it could look like this as well. So at the top there you have what a triple root would look like. This is a triple. And in the middle you have what a single root looks like. It slices through and a double root bounces off. And you can see in all of these graphs they're single roots. It cuts through once, twice, three times. So the degree is three because it cuts through the graph three times. In B, it cuts through one single root, two single roots, three single roots, four single roots, so the degree is going to be four for that one. All right, so we have this one with degree three. So what I can do to do the final step, part four, is I can set up the equation A times X minus one single root times x minus another single root times x minus the third single root. Okay, root 3. So let's go ahead and do uh, part A right now. Let me make a little bit of uh, something here. I want to give myself some space to work, so hold on one second. There we go. I wanted to give myself a little bit of room to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the three roots, A times x minus negative 5 is actually going to go in as x plus 5 times x minus 3 times x minus 7. We've done this several times in this class. And by the way, uh, if any of these roots were double or triple, the only thing that would change, let's pretend for a minute that x minus 7 is a triple root. You would put a 3 as its exponent. 
if x minus 3 was a double root here, so if this graph bounced off like that at 3, you would square that quantity when you go to do the work. We do have all single roots here, so we have all uh, exponents of 1. Our next step is to take the y-intercept, 105, and solve for a. If we're putting in 0 for x, this is going to be a 5. If we're putting in 0 for x, that's going to be a negative 3, and that's going to be a negative 7. So we have 105 equals 5 times 3 times 7. Sorry, both negative. Negative 3 and negative 7. So 105 would equal, uh, let's see, 5 times 3 is 15. 15 times 7 what do you got there? 15 times 7. 105? So you have 105a equaling 105. That means a is 1. There's no dilation. Uh, so the equation would simply be, and we'll put it in red, so you can see it here. Ready? If a is 1, then your equation is simply what you see here. x, minus x plus 5 times x minus 3 times x minus 7. Go ahead and graph that in your graphing calculator and confirm that it looks like this and confirm that you get the points uh, that uh, are on the graph. Trace it, make sure you get the right y-intercept, and so on. Okay, so that's how we do these, and let's go ahead and tack on an extra root for part B. I'm going to do part B now, and uh, it has it's a fourth degree equation, so it's going to have one more root at x minus r4. All right, let's see if this one has any type of a dilation to it. So we're going to solve for A. First, we've got to plug in the roots. X minus minus 6 would be X plus 6. X minus minus 3 would be X plus 3. X minus 2 is the next one. And X minus 6 is the fourth. So we have four roots there. A little smart board trouble here. hope it clears up. Uh, let's go ahead and plug in 0, 108. So 108 is going to go in for y. Uh, if x is 0, we're going to have 6 times 3 times uh, negative 2 times negative 6. Okay, so we have a fourth degree equation, and it looks like, uh, what do we got here? Uh, 6 times 6 times 6, right? These two guys make 6 times another 6 is 36, uh, times another 6 is 216. So 108 would equal 216a. It's going to be positive because a negative times a negative will make a positive. When you divide both sides by 216, you find that a equals 1 half. So the final answer for writing this in factored form will be y equals 1 half x plus 6, x plus 3, x minus 2, and x minus 6. Graph that in your calculator. Confirm that it looks like the graph that we see up here, and we'll be home free. Again, uh, in addition to doing mini investigation number 6 on page 427, I'd like you to also complete parts C and D on uh, page 426. Uh, if you need to rewind this video and watch it again, go for it, and then you can actually see what problems C and D look like. So again, come in tomorrow. I expect that you'll have C and D done from page 426 and the mini investigation number six from page 427. Have a good night.